Aaron, it's so good to see you. And yourself, it's been a long, long time. It's so good to see your face. It's been too long. We, we, we had a, a decent run for a while of catching up each, with each other every so long. And I lived in London, obviously, which I don't anymore. I live on the North Coast now. But um, I, I genuinely miss your face. I miss yours too. I feel like it's, I don't know, we, no matter, when we speak to each other, though, it's like we've never been apart. Like, it's, it's, you're one of those people that, you know, as soon as we're back in contact, it's just like we're back being stupid together. <laughs> we, we go way back, don't we? I mean, it's actually officially our 20-year anniversary. No way, that's, yeah. that's a long time. Well, when I first met you, you were, I think you were about four, weren't you? You were, you were just about four? <laughs> I looked about four. No, I was, I was 13. You were 13, and that was, that was the start of S Club Juniors. Yeah, I think it was on some CBBC, probably on the CBBC sofa. Probably. It was, I, I remember you coming in because it was, um, you, were, you, know, you, were, you forget how young 13 years old is, don't you? It's, um, it's only looking yeah. back to realise just how young you were in that industry. Yeah, it's nuts. Especially obviously, but it was a completely different world then. Like if you look at 13 now to 13 back then, it's just, it's, it's crazy how the time, where the time's gone and how it's changed over the past 20 years. Well, let's start at the very beginning and let's, let's talk about what it was that made you want to be in the band. I mean, I presume you've always been a dancer anyway. It's always something that's been in your blood. And then of course you've auditioned for what turned out to be one of the biggest bands at the time. Um, <laughs> let's start there. Let's start with your childhood and, and what you were like as a kid and, and how it led oh, to that. This is your life moment. Um, okay. Well, I'm from Newquay in Cornwall, so I'm a little beach boy. Um, but to be fair, there wasn't really much around there, to be honest, like as in stuff to do, it's kind of you either, it's quite a sporty, everyone did sports, but I kind of tried it, but I was always into my performing, any type of music that was on, I was always kind of jigging about, um, always putting on shows for whoever, could be, who I'd pay to watch. Um, but um, yeah, and then I think it was, I was about 10 when my mum and dad kind of gave in and was like, okay, I think this is kind of what he wants to get into. And then I kind of did like a local Saturday school and did a few hours of, on a weekend of singing, dancing, drama. And then I was actually lucky to, as soon as I uh, started in the school, I managed to get into Oliver, um, which was on tour. Um, I can't remember, yeah, it was, where did I do it? Started in Plymouth, yeah, so that wasn't too far from me. So that was like my first job, professional job at 10. Um, and I just loved it. And I think that just kind of kick-started it for me. And then um, whatever I could kind of perform in, I was there. And it wasn't until obviously I was 13 when I had the audition for the juniors. And it was actually a friend of mine that was like, oh, I've heard about this. Have you seen it? Like, do you want to come with me? And it was in Cardiff. Um, that was the closest place we could audition. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I asked my mum and dad. And they were like, yeah, I'll take you up. And originally it was only just to perform with S Club 7 at their Wembley gig I think so it was kind of like played although it was a big opportunity it was kind of played down um and then yeah went to those auditions um got through the the rounds there then went to the final um the week after and I actually didn't make the band to begin with um I got down to the last I think it was 14 or something and then I didn't didn't get the didn't get the job and then I remember the like long journey home of just like sad because <laughs> obviously it was, a, it was a big thing I met S Club 7 it was the first like famous person I've ever met famous people I've ever met and it was just such an overwhelming experience that kind of like not to make it to that last hurdle was a bit was very disappointing so obviously it was back to school the next day and then it was I think it was around like Wednesday like I think the audition was on the Sunday and it's a few days afterwards when I actually got a call from uh, Simon Fuller oh. obviously he's like the creator of S Club 7 and Spice Girls and many more names um, and he was like I've not been able to like sleep without thinking about like you like I feel like you you're meant to be in this band um I do you want to would you still be like to be in it and obviously of course I said yes and then yeah the rest is history really and I was then came up to London and we had our first meeting as a, as a band and that's when they kind of just said like you're not just going to be kind of performing this club seven you're going to kind of be your band in your own right and kind of do the do the whole tour um and yeah, and then they literally played our first single, One Step Closer, and that was like insane, just to kind of the, the snowball it all became on, on that first day. And then, yeah, and then it just was honestly nuts from then on. I remember thinking how intense it was, or how intense it must have been for you, because I was a bit older, obviously, and I was presenting on CBC at the time. 
and you seem yeah. to be the guys that I ran into the most. I remember being in an airport once. I think it was Manchester Airport, and I was flying somewhere to do a shoot, and you were flying somewhere to do a tour. It, I was even at the time it was like it, it, it just seems a little intense, you know, for, for for very very young people to be into that into that world and doing what you were doing. You you were literally nonstop. I mean, yeah, I'm but- not saying something. It was crazy, like how much we did do in a short space of time, and um, yeah, we were all over the place. And it was, so, and we had so there was so many of us in such a big entourage of so obviously because we were looked after really well. It just felt like we were like a force just going around the UK, just like, tearing the place up. Um, and you couldn't miss us because we were so loud and noisy. Um, but it was all fun and games, really. It was a good time. <laughs> what do you think when you look back on it now it's been fair, it's been a, quite a few years and I, I i think about my career as being this thing that i was a part of but i didn't really get a chance to experience it i mean i was at the bbc for 17 years and i did so much and so it was it was so crammed together you know i was doing prank patrol one week and then they're behaving badly and then i would do these shows back to back and by the end of it it was like what was that because it, at, yeah. at this age now i look back and go what happened to those years? What was I, did I experience it? Was I just on robot mode? What was I doing? Because it's just, it flies by so quickly. And before you know it, you're this side of it. But actually, the experiences you've had are more than most people can even cram into a lifetime. It's quite bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I do regret having like, I think it's just obviously like a mental age as well. Like as a kid, you never like take time to stop and actually take in everything that's going on and how lucky you are at the time. So I think, although I was very grateful for my position and what we were doing, I just think like the way I appreciate things now in my life, I'd love to go back and really appreciate them properly. Um, And also just kind of have, I don't know, what I know now about things and just maybe just having a bit more of a, a voice or like putting a bit of creativity, like what I'm actually good at into the band where I just felt like, you just were kind of like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just agreed to everything just because you just felt like you were giving an opportunity and you just were like, yeah, I'll do that. I'll wear that when really you didn't want to wear that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like I can't, I, won't, I don't regret it. And it was it really just, I'm, I loved kind of growing up in Cornwall, but I didn't have the best school life due to my love of like the performing arts. And I almost am grateful for like the band taking me out of a situation where I, probably don't know how I would have got through the next four years like at school where everyone kind of gets a bit older and it probably gets a bit more hard to deal with so I'm kind of glad I was taken out of that situation because I'm not sure how I would have coped um, in a small town but um, yeah it kind of propelled me into that kind of this is my job now and I want to continue doing this. Well it was quite a small chunk of your what is illustrious career now Um, but I thought we'd have a bit of fun with your memory banks and see if you can remember stuff. So if you search online, Press Club Juniors, there are still thousands of fans that still play the music and still, you know, there's still lots of fan accounts. And one fan has made a quiz about Press Club Juniors. Uh, I'm going to be the one that's going to have the best, the best mind as well. Like everyone says, how, Aaron, how do you remember this? So if I don't pass this now, I'm going to be in trouble. Well, this is all about, this is all about you and, the, and that age group. And um, I, I, so I, obviously I know you really well and I've known you since you were this old. And I think I know most of the answers, but I've got to tick the boxes as we go through. So we're going to do the quiz together. And right, okay. We'll okay. submit the answers and see how many you get right. Uh, we're going to start with a nice and easy one. How many members are there in S Club Juniors? Eight. Eight. Uh, who sent in a video to the S Club search auditions because he or she couldn't make it? Jay. That was Jay. In S Club search, I mean, this might be a guess. You might know the exact answer. How many kids made it to the final? You want the options? Oh, God. Is there options? Yeah. You've got 85, 100, 10, or 40. Okay. Um, process of elimination. There was definitely more than 10 because 14 made like the, the final last bit of the day. It's definitely in the high. It was, I felt like it was still a lot of kids. As so it was probably 40 kids, 85. Oh, is it 85 the highest? 100 is the highest. Ah, I feel like there was, I'm trying to picture 40 kids in a room, like of how much. It's an average school class, isn't it? Or a bit more than a school class. So it's, I'd it's, say it's, it's, this, why is it so difficult? I feel like 40 is a random number though to like. I mean, of all, of all the questions to get wrong, 
I w- it wouldn't be a big thing if you got this one wrong. I mean, so- actually, no, I'm thinking about it because the thing is, they I remember sitting downstairs a lot, and there was they def- they definitely did there was things going on. I reckon it's more than I reckon about. I'm going to go for eighty five. Eighty five. Now that's, I'm trying to think where they would have got that fact from. It's obviously from a voiceover on the TV. And I feel like it, it would just sound better by going the final hundred, which is why I'm leaning to like that hundred number. I'll go a hundred. Why not? We're going to go hundred. Okay, fine. Changing the answer to hundred. Um, it doesn't matter if you get that one wrong. I, I wouldn't have a clue. I probably did the voiceover for it as well. Um, probably did. Where was Daisy born? Essex. Okay, I've got, Bar- I've got Barking, Great Yarmouth, Havering, and Truro. I'm Truro. Um, hang on, Great Yarmouth's no end. I'm get- Barking's Essex, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, let's just go there. Barking. Uh, which two juniors joined the band a day after everyone else? Oh, was it a day? Me and Hannah. You and Hannah. Question number six. Oh, wow. You sh- I mean, you should get this. Name all of the S Club juniors from oldest to youngest. Uh, okay, so I'm the oldest, and then it goes Frankie, Calvin, uh, It's either Rochelle, Stacey, or Stacey, Rochelle, because them four are annoyingly close together. Thank you, Calvin. I'm going to just say, hang on, I know Rochelle's birthday. Rochelle's in March. Rochelle and Stacey are in March, I swear. No, I think Stacey's in February. Um, sorry, me, Frankie, Calvin, Stacey, Rochelle, Oh my god. <laughs> Jay, Daisy, Hannah. That is one of the options. So I'm guessing that is that is right. The other the other one that had you starting as the oldest was Aaron, Calvin, Frankie, Stacey, Rochelle, Jay, Daisy, Hannah. So they swapped around Calvin and Frankie. So put Calvin as the oldest. Okay. Above Frankie. No, that, that's wrong. You've you got that right. Um I didn't know this. Which two juniors share the same birthday? Oh, yeah. Um, Hannah and Daisy. <laughs> Wait there. Or is it? Yeah, it is Hannah and Daisy. Definitely Hannah and Daisy. Okay. Um, this is a random one. Which junior is an only child? Jay. Jay's an only child. Two more left. Boy, this is a tough one. I know the year because I was there. What quiz is this? This is the last one. I mean, it's, like, it's pretty hardcore, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, there's only two more questions left. What was the date of the final S Club search audition? Are you kidding me? No, Jay. Superman. We've, so we've got October the 31st, 2001. November the 4th, 2001. So four days later, um, which means those two are too close, aren't they? To not one of them must be the answer. July the 27th, 2002, which it wasn't. because It was definitely 2001. Um, and December the 8th, 2001. It's not December the 8th because that's too close to Christmas. Because I, I definitely remember like audition up in London for the meeting, going home again, coming up for about, you know, two weeks to get like the first four songs recorded and like a bit of a plan of what's happening next year. And then we kind of had Christmas off. In, so to do all of that, it's definitely going to be like one of the first two. So it's going to be either... October or November. I still think November is too late, so I'm going to say October. October 31st, 2001. And then this is the last question. What was the date when S Club Juniors were on television for the first time as a band? Okay, so that's Children in Need. No, yes, because we did the, I swear we did like, a, we did a live interview on CBBC in the afternoon and then we kind of hung around and then we did Children in Need that evening. Was that and before children... the Prom in the Park? Because I did CBBC Prom in the Park with you in 2001 and that was summer, I was sure. No, because we don't, the previous question was only, we got together in 2001. Oh, that must have been 2002 then. The yeah. Do you remember with the orchestra behind you? 
Yeah, I do. Yeah, no, that we did our we did New Direction. That was our third single, so that would definitely been later. Okay. So I do I do remember weird facts. You've got a great great memory. I'm just trying to think. When does children need? It's 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 like what are the options? November the sixteenth, two thousand and one. February the fourth, two thousand and two. I'm going to say November. Okay. Yeah, which this makes sense because that helps me with the other question because if we did. We got together in October, the audition was October, we were on Children Need in November. So you wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have had the final S Club search audition on November the 4th and then be on telly on the 16th. So did you have, was it like a two week turnaround for you to get picked before you were literally thrown onto Children in Need for your first team? Well, I just remember, obviously I was picked. Remember I, I was like called up on the week, the midweek of that week and then Obviously, the plans to go to London couldn't have been straight away because obviously it might have been that weekend. But I just remember like going home again with my parents because obviously I wasn't, we just went for a meeting. We didn't, I didn't go up with all my stuff. So I think the turnaround's too quick to be on TV next week. So I'm going to stick with my November the 16th. Final answer. Do you want to phone a friend? All right, good. So that's all of answered. It now says submit my answers. This quiz does not work anymore. <laughs> Okay, do you want to know how many you got right? I definitely would have got one wrong. Oh, eight out of ten. Oh, shoot. That's bad. Eight out of ten. So. I definitely got, I think it's how many people in that audition room? Forty. It says <sighs> only 40 children made the final. 10,000 kids actually came. 10,000. Yeah. Uh, and then when, when S Club finally judged you, I remember that episode. That was a huge episode on CBBC. We got a lot of letters about that. Um, yeah. Back in the day when kids wrote letters. Do you remember that? Um, yeah. That's back in the day of the Nokia 3310. Now you say 40, that is ringing a bell, you know. <laughs> well, good, because that's right. <laughs> um, so 40 children and the finals were held in London on the 4th of November 2001. So you're... Uh, oh, God, so I was wrong about that turnaround. It was quick. The rapid turnaround. So it's literally 12 days. So the audition was held in London on the 4th. That's when the last audition was. And then on the 16th, just 12 days later, you were on TV. Oh, and it wasn't Children in Need. It's the right date, but it wasn't Children in Need. What else did you do? What, what was your very first performance on TV? It was that. It was. No, I, I remember it because it's in the, it's, it, the thing is we didn't have anything to perform. It was literally, because Never Had a Dream Come True was the Children Need S Club 7 song. And then that was our audition song. So we all knew it. So it was like the easiest thing to perform. We didn't have any music to perform anything else. I think there may be, I, I think, that that question, quit. <laughs> I think if, if the question was, when did S Club Juniors perform on television for the first time as a band on their own, as in, as a band? Oh, hang on a sec. Oh. So hang on, what are, those, what are the options again? Because obviously this is like, we're talking on, it would have been on the, it would have been on the tour. Um, hang on, perform as a band or on TV as a band? TV, so the, the, your first performance was on TV according to this. Um, well, it would have, well, it would have been in April because we didn't do anything because we, I'm telling now, it was first performance on TV was with um, Never Had a Dream Come True, Children Need. And the following, then we recorded like One Step Closer and some four songs, the four songs we were going to do on tour, which was the following maybe like February, March. And then we did all promotion for One Step Closer, which came out in April 2002. So First TV performance was would it would have been, I don't know. I, it was the Saturday show. It was our first performance of uh, One Step Closer on TV, which would have been, uh, I don't know, April or March. So you didn't, in fact, sing Have You Ever with S Club Seven. Fuck, Have You Ever? Sorry, I swore. Right, that's the one I was. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> 
But when was that? That was on CBBC. That will have been the Saturday show. No, 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 no. Hang on. Have you ever? Was the song that I've got confused with? Never had a drink on true. But I'm t- that's the one I'm telling you about. That we didn't do it on CBBC. We did it on. Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she seems pretty up on it. But the thing is, they they performed it on CBBC. But I remember we didn't do anything. Like we we literally just we stood in the aisle. <laughs> I, I remember you performing with S Club 7 because it was it was kind of part of your prize. So I remember that happening, but I didn't realise it was your first time because obviously we we followed the TV show for weeks while you we were being selected. So we're in the studio. I think it was me and Sophie or me and Angelica maybe in the studio. In fact, no, it was me and Fern. It was early days. Yeah. And I remember you coming in and performing with S Club. So, but I, I, but I thought, you'd, I thought, you know, normally you would do the Saturday show before you would do press with us but the thing is um it's on um it was on our t- it's on the tv show because i can remember because um angelica's the voiceover for it and it's mm. on s club it definitely was us we we did cbbc in the afternoon and then we performed a s club seven in the evening on on children in need fabulous so, so that's so close that okay. case, I mean that you were right. You were right. It was November the sixteenth. You got it. You got the answer correct as far as the quiz goes. It's just that, yeah. Apparently it was the F, the uh, S Club Seven performance. Um, I think we should scrub all of them and just say you're right about all of them. You were there. But um, well, there you go. It was a bit of fun. That's the S Club Junior stuff done. Wow, that was that was that was like not even about the bat. I was waiting for like what sing, what place in the charts did this get not like way back, <laughs> way back that's, like. that's literally day one stuff isn't it all that but um it's the but first one I found. it says that you're a true s club fan it's good to know isn't it um right fine let's let, let's move on from that because obviously in between you doing that and me starting to get jobs in pantomimes yeah i was doing um i used to play muddles and i started peter pan quite early I work for a great company called UK Productions, who you know pretty well. So I, I might have seen you on the odd occasion for interviews and all that kind of stuff. And then you just went up and did your own thing. And then there was a, a serendipitous moment where we both joined forces again. And, uh, and you were Dandini to my buttons in Tunbridge oh, Wells in pantomime. So oh, let's God. talk about what happened in between. I'm presuming it was just S Club Nuts and... I stopped nuts, yeah. We've, uh, that kind of went on for four years. And then when that finished, I went back to college to like train in musical theatre and performing arts just because I loved, I loved like what I was doing. And I just felt like I hadn't really had the proper education that I probably needed to succeed in it. And now that I'm in, I've been working in the industry, I'm so glad I did because there's just like, not only like just being in a college surrounded by people that also, uh, kind of like enjoy the same thing as you do which kind of I kind of got that kind of like I made friendships there I kind of felt like I was part of something again um it's just like just the knowledge and kind of just of, of music and musicals and types of dance it just really helps you with all with everything that kind of came came my way but I was there for three years and I think in your second and third year you get to um you can work um and panto is the kind of thing that you can do and um because although I didn't really ever do much of my name, like saying that I was all Aaron from S Club Juniors, I think I did have an offer that came through for this. And it was weird because it was like my first kind of job on my own after the band. And I wasn't really prepared because I just felt like I was just safe in this little college world and I didn't really want to go back out into it. So yeah, so that was a big, um, I was really nervous about it. And I'm just, like, the fact that you were on that job literally just saved my life because I, I just was like, a little, felt like I was at home again. I knew that you were gonna kind of help me through it all. Um, so yeah, and we had a laugh, didn't we? Oh, we did have a laugh, yeah. We had we had a laugh at the expense of somebody in particular who we won't mention, but yeah, <laughs> yeah the, a lot of good memories on that. One of my favorite memories, in fact, I think I remember saying to you at the time, because I've always liked making films, as you know, I've always, I've always had a camera with me and I've always either been taking photographs or doing something. But yeah. you were you were rehearsing for I think it was an exam that you had at college and you were doing it on the roof of the theatre. You kept going out with your headphones on onto the roof of the theatre yeah. and you were doing all the all that stuff. I remember thinking, God, if I had a, if I had a cine camera with me now, this would be an amazing showreel because you, you've always been, even when you were a, a tiny person, you've always been the one that stood out as the one that just has 
it's not fair to say talent, but there's, there was always just something else about the effort that you put in. There was just always something else about. So I, I've obviously worked with a lot of people over the years and I've worked with a lot of dance teachers and I've, I've appeared in various things where I've tried to dance as part of a laugh, as a prank or whatever. And the one thing dance teachers always talk about is the finish, how you finish, how far that move extends. You know, if you're bringing your arm out, don't just flop it. It has to either hit something or lock or finish balletically or whatever. You've always been that kind of performer for me. And I remember being blown away. I remember telling you on the roof, because you were like, Barn, can you just do one? I've got to practice my exam. I'm like, can I not just watch just to just to see what happens? Because this is unbelievable. And it was a body locking thing you were doing. It was just, it, it blew me away. And it was, um, yeah, I think it was the first time we'd really sort of spoken about something outside of it being anything else other than S Club Juniors. It was like, you're actually a talented boy. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, was, it was my first kind of, that it sort of something flicked, that light went on. I was like, wow, this is actually, this is exciting. And um, it was a pleasure to watch. It always has been. We actually did a video diary. Do you remember that? <laughs> Mate, I still have them. I need to see this. I do need to see them. Well, I mean, what I'll do, because obviously we're recording this and I'm going to put it out after us. So what I'll do, yeah. I'll, I'll find them for you and I'll play them to you because I don't know what we said. But all I know is that, you know, we were having a bit of fun in the dressing room. and we were, It was just random because we were working with a guy who was um, not well in the head, I don't think. And um, he it's very difficult to play a clip with him in it without having to bleep out all the words that he uses. But I know that we did a video diary every day and because we, we were hiring a barn. Do you remember the barn we hired out in the farmland? Yes. A massive yes, place. Yes. That was of course, that was when we started throwing chocolates at each other and then, um, you know, pulling each other off the, the sofa with the blankets to try and do that, removing the cloth, the, removing the plates off the table trick. So many fun times. But um, I, I'm going to try and pull that video diary out. And if I don't play it here, it was too rude to play. But um, if I do, it means Aaron said it was okay. Okay. So after Panto, um, you then sort of found your own steam, really, didn't you? You became who you are today it then became a direction where you were heading you were always destined to head I think and there was no pull from anybody else it wasn't necessarily management saying you need to be molded to this you sort of found yourself after college and went right I've now got a clear idea of what I want to be yeah I think towards um actually no I was in my third year when I did that panto um so I was obviously coming to my last little bit of training and I just kind of Although I didn't really expect much when I went there, I just knew that I needed a, a kind of a, a grounding from there. But kind of as I was getting, I felt like I was left, not left behind. I felt like everyone was just in front of me with just their knowledge. They'd been doing it from such a young age and had all, you know, they'd done the competitions, the festivals. And I was like, I'm literally trying to learn all of this, like in this three years and trying to catch up. And then when we actually, um, in your third year, you can go out um, and audition for like musicals or the big jobs that are coming that kind of tie into uh, for when you leave college. I was just getting just as far as all the other guys that had been doing this for, for, for years. And I felt like, you know, I must have been, I must be doing something right here. Um, and then I, I landed my first my la uh, my first job, which was in a musical flash dance, um, which is, you know, Arling Phillips had a name to it. Which was, she was a big name. And um yeah, I just loved it. Like, I think I just felt like I I got something through through my talent and not just like saying that I was in the band. Although, like, I'm sure I could sing and dance a little bit for the panto, but I feel like it still was just uh, probably my face was on the poster because I was in the band. But I felt like flash dance was just something that I I earned from doing that three years at college, and it felt good. And um, you know, and I enjoyed doing the musicals. It was kind of hard work doing the same thing every day for a year, um, eight shows a week. Uh, but you know, it was a great, great, great first job. And I was just very lucky with the people I met on that because um, one of the directors was also a choreographer that worked with X Factor. And she kind of, maybe like yourself, that used to watch, kind of watch me messing around and kind of dancing. She knew that I kind of had something. And then she asked me to help with the audition for the dances for the X Factor tour. And then she asked me to take the audition and then then she actually took then she signed me out of my contract for like a couple of weeks to actually help her i was assistant choreographer on the um x factor tour which i then did for a couple of years running with her um which is for the age i was i think i was what 20 yeah 20 um doing that i was just really 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 lucky and i think that kind of whacked a choreography credit on my name and then ever since then i've kind of been like performing choreographing 
my way up. I did another musical after Flashdance. We were Rock You in the West End. Um, so I ticked off the West End debut because the Flashdance was a tour. And then I just knew that, although I loved the musical, um, the musical um, theatre stuff, I just loved the commercial side of things where dancing for like, I wanted to be dancing for pop stars and artists and kind of do music videos and big tours and stuff. So that was kind of my direction there. And that having that X Factor credit um, did help me. So then, yeah, I went into kind of the commercial scene and started doing the Saturday night live shows like Britain's Got Talent and X Factor, which was the, which were mental. Um, but that gave me like a TV training of like, you know, just live TV was crazy. Although I've done stuff before, like with the band, but I think when you do a whole show and you've got to just be on it and have so much that could change or go wrong or just, you know, so technical, it was definitely a, a military operation on a Saturday night, but um, I wouldn't change it. It was, it was good times. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of still uh, less dancing now, just because I feel like, especially in the UK, there's not really much more that I can achieve that I think I would, I, I love dance, not, don't get me wrong, I'll be doing that for as long as I live, but I think as, as a job, um, going from dancer to choreographer, I think it was like a choreographer and more of a creative role now, like I just feel like it's, I always see the bigger picture or, you know, if I hear music, I, I love creating stuff and just, finding unique ways to kind of like share what's in my head really. Um, and so I think, you know, there, there is a time I've got to kind of stop dancing and just, cause you can't, you, you can't do both really. You do have to concentrate. The, the, good, the good thing about it is like when I choreograph, I still get to dance with the dancers that are doing my work, which um, I still get that kind of thrill out of. Um, but yeah, I just want to kind of move forward with that and, you know, I want to do more musicals. I'd love to choreograph more musicals because I love the, the the family vibe of it, like having a creative team and having that like kind of like longevity of a job. Whereas sometimes the commercial things that you do are just literally a week and it's new people and it's. I mean, I, I love doing it, but it's just not maybe as I like having a bit of a family around me. Um, so yeah, and I'd love to do like maybe films and um, maybe more like bigger creative, like you know the full creative director side of things with. You know what's on the screens behind the light and the costumes just the full you know the full shebang really um but yeah i mean this i, I kind of do lots of little bits and bobs i still love my, my music editing my, my video editing i like being behind the camera too like you know you just got to make use of what you got really and i think especially like during these times you just kind of just try your best and get get creative <laughs> I think it's been, although it's, it is what it is, 2020 was what it was, the amount of creative people that I know that have lost their businesses because they just can't, you know, keep them going, but it's made them more creative. They've almost become more ambitious and more kind of... Oh, yeah, I'm literally, like, raring to go. I can't... Um, I feel like I've not worked for a year. Like, it feels that way. Although I've done, like, the tiniest little bits, and it looks like I've kind of been working, but I'm like, yeah, but it, honestly, that took me, like, a day or... It took like an afternoon, and when you take that out of a year, that's like ridiculous. That's I've not been on a job that lasts weeks or anything for like a year, and it just feels, yeah, it's insane. But it, it, yeah, I'm ready to burst basically, so I can't wait to get back to real life. Well, I think um, the way our lives have always worked anyway, there is some sort of serendipitous kind of we tend to do that a lot in our lives, don't we? And then come back together at some point. I think we're on the way back. I'm writing a musical at the moment, which of course you're, you're always going to be the first choice to choreograph it, but. Um, <laughs> I think um, no matter what happens, there'll always be some point for us to get together and do some work together. And who knows, maybe we can stick it on here and show people what we're doing. But um, in the meantime, bud, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for joining me. And thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come and see you soon. Absolutely. Well, <laughs>